everybody at home. Welcome, welcome to you. It is a new day, Mr. Tusi. A very brand new day that the Lord has given us out of the abundance of his mercies. Beloved of the Lord, we welcome you to this free service. And I have Adelaide back again in the studio. I'm so excited you are around, Adelaide. As we welcome you to this free service, you know how it goes. This is my free service. Your, your pre service. service. Our pre service. service. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. We're recapping into the week. I must say my my week wasn't very interesting, Mr. Tusi. But on Monday, it was the International Women's Day. Yes. And I didn't get a message from some certain MC. So I'm wondering, did you send your mom? So you know what happened? The thing is, I, I think there was a network issue. But I think I sent it, you see. And it just didn't get through. However, I did wish those <laughs> that I met face-to-face on a Monday, I did wish them a merry International Women's Day. And to all <laughs> of you women in the world, happy, happy belated International Day, now we say. So you had a network problem the whole week? It just, it just didn't go through on Monday. You know, oh, so, okay. Yeah. It didn't go through. But it's going through today. It's happy going through International <laughs> Women's Day to you guys everywhere in the world. God is wonderful. And I actually think that International Women's Day ties in with the teaching that we got um, on Wednesday from Pastor Kiluba. And the theme was dethroning the feminine rulership of universal evil. Quite deep and intense things right there. Uh, but is going to be unraveled more for you throughout the service, throughout the sermon, and you can also access the teaching online. It's available for you. Our God keeps on doing great and mightier things every time in our lives. Just like the Bible says, His mercies are renewed every day. And tonight, we have some testimonies coming from some of our brethren. And they're about to share with us what God has been doing in their lives through these online services. Let's hear what they have to say. A blessed time in the presence of the Lord, where what He gives, we share with others too. That is the beauty of fellowship. A time of strength and encouragement. We have two testimonies tonight. Our first testimony is coming from our lovely sister in the Lord, Zanele. She says, The online services have been great so far. God has been moving and working despite us not being able to gather as often as we used to. For me, they have showed me that God cannot be limited. The online services changed the limited vision I had of worship. Thank you, Sister Zanella, for your wonderful testimony. God is indeed moving. Our second testimony is coming from our brother in the Lord, Ramye. He says, I have been blessed by the online services so much. I never used to watch the online services until I came to JTL. I found God in the online services and his presence is so tangible there. I never had Wi-Fi at my place, but I had to buy it so that I regularly connect to the online services. There is definitely a great move of God in the online services. Thank you, Brother Ramia, for your inspiring testimony. God is indeed moving. Stay connected to the move of God through these services. As the Lord may inspire you to share your testimony with us, by sending it to Adelaide and Kwasi, and best believe, many others will be blessed by the great works of God in you. God bless you. Wonderful testimonies those were, brethren. It's so amazing to see God move in mysterious and miraculous ways. Who would have thought that online would be the way in which the Holy Spirit would choose to move in this time and this season? So thank you so much for sharing your testimonies, all right? I'm so excited for this next part. I'll be introducing to you this new thing that we have going on in the church and it's called Watch Parties. I know you've heard about watch parties from Facebook and whatnot, but this is a special kind of watch party. This is a watch party where the Holy Spirit comes. Now, I have a questionnaire for you, okay? How many of you, and you can just answer in the comment section, how many of you watch the online service 
in your bed. And how many of you have fallen asleep watching service from all the way last year? Oh, I like this one. If you're at home, how many of you get called by your parents or somebody thinking you're on your phone disturbing your concentration while you're in the service? Well, the answer and the solution for you and this conundrum are the watch parties. And this is basically when the, be- when the brethren come together and we binge watch the series together. So we open in prayer. We set it up on a nice big screen. There's some coffee. There's some tea. There's some juice there. And we all settle in and get connected. Worship together on screen and virtually. Oh, virtually. And we worship together you know, virtually, but also physically. And it's just so amazing. God really does move in those watch parties. All right. And so if you don't have a watch party near you, I think this would be the greatest opportunity for you to host a watch party. Maybe you're at home somewhere in free state or you're at home somewhere in the Northern Cape and there's not really a a JTL watch party, but you're connected to the service. Maybe you can just set it up in your living room and no one will call you to come wash dishes during the time of the service, you know? No one will disturb you with a WhatsApp message because your mind will be fully connected and you'll be able to receive 100% of what God wants to speak to you through the service. So there you have it. Watch parties are here for you. Hi guys, my name is Khabat Mulete and I'm going to be sharing with you guys my watch party experience. So usually I used to connect to the service um, by myself here at home and you know I'd sing there and there but most of my interaction uh, with the service would be through emojis commenting but ever since I've been part of a watch party my experience has been rather unexpected it's not what I thought it would be it's actually more than I thought it would be there is such a sense of freedom and liberation you know to engage with the service online there's freedom to praise to worship i mean we shout hallelujah together we dance to the worship and it's so wonderful because you don't feel awkward while doing it because you have other brothers and sisters doing it as you would so i encourage a lot of people to be part of a watch party um there is wonderful fellowship there is so much freedom so my experience just comes down to the freedom that i never used to have on my own i'm beginning to have being part of a watch party thank you adelaide it is truly amazing that we always have the theme and the word for every season that is brought unto us by god through his servants Mm -hmm. and so tonight we have a theme and the theme is all will come to the beauty of christ that is the theme for the service and the theme scripture is found in the book of john chapter 12 from verse 27 to verse 32 i'll be reading it for you from nkjv and this is how it reads Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that... Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that its head thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out and I if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people 
to myself. That is the theme scripture for tonight. And the theme is, all will come to the beauty of Christ. Adelaide, what comes unto thy mind now that we have read the scripture and we hear the theme, which is all will come to, Christ, to the beauty of Christ. What comes unto thy mind when you hear this? Um, I think, gosh, like I have like tons to say. Um, but mostly because of the teaching that we got from Pastor Kiluba on Wednesday. Yes. I mean, that teaching was a bit like a movie. Like when I was listening to it, I'm just like, oh my God, you know? Um, but, you know, um, from this scripture, we're speaking about Jesus and he's praying. And then God answers and the people are listening and they think it's just God thundering. Or they just... I don't know, they're hearing thunder and he said, well, you know, it's not for my sake, but for your sake. And he speaks about um, the ruler of this world being cast out. And as he's lifted up, he will draw all men to him. I remembered um, a part in the sermon. You should really get your hands on this teaching by Pastor Kiluba. And he speaks about he was in his prayer room. He was in his room. He was praying. And um, he had a visitation from Babylon. Okay. So we're going to read a scripture actually. Um, taken from Revelations chapter 17. Um, and it speaks about Babylon the prostitute on the beast. And he described Babylon as a spirit that looked so good. It was so good. But something quite particular about the eyes is that the eyes, the eyes of this spirit that came to visit him in his room was transmitting a power of unbelief. Can you imagine that? Such a beautiful, beautiful creature standing in front of you, transmitting to you an unholy thing, you know. And, and God said to him, change her out cast her out you know and so I love that we're speaking about the beauty that is in Christ because there are other beauties that listen and I really want to read the scripture with you guys it, it's this it's describing Babylon and it says um, it's taken from Revelation chapter 17 um, verse Three. I'll take it from three. It says, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adultery you know but I think it's worth mentioning that you see this woman was glittering in gold there's so many things that glitter that have the appearance of beauty but are killing you and in the scripture you see John says he was taken to a spiritual place you understand this is a spiritual reality so maybe you are experiencing a lack of faith you know and you're thinking oh maybe it's just the circumstances that are happening in my life I'm just a bit low but you must understand that there's a spirit that is working behind that and I love all the opportunity that stands right in front of us in the service today that we are going to behold the beauty of Christ and something quite beautiful about the beauty of Christ is that it's able to change you it's able to change your circumstances the beauty of Christ has power that's why he says if I be lifted up if all man is drawn to me I know that they will be saved and isn't that the message of salvation that we preach? Look to Jesus and be saved. Look to Jesus and be transformed. And as you are transformed, as you are looking to him, he is also making you. He's also making you beautiful. You know, uh, 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 we live in a time where people are, are, are very self-aware. I want to speak to someone who's struggling um, with self-esteem, who's struggling with how they see themselves either in the workplace or even in in their ministry God can make you beautiful there is beauty in Christ and not just the beauty that glitters maybe you're thinking about hips and you're thinking about I don't know what else you're thinking about these physical things that fade but there's a spiritual beauty that God can give you and if there's a spiritual beauty that God can give you that can be revealed there's no one that could deny the work of God that is doing in your work there's no amount of work of Satan where whether it be shame, whether it be pain, whether it be lack that can hide the beauty that God gives. And I'm so filled in my heart. Mm, I can feel it. When you behold Jesus, you receive his beauty. 
you know, I used not to understand why at church do we focus so much on chasing the demons. <laughs> I just thought when you're a Christian, you just need to be peaceful. Just bless God and, you know, just focus on Him mm. and let everything else go away. But I learned, you know, even from this scripture and from what Pastor Kiluba was talking about on Wednesday, mm. that he had to chase that Babylon out because it may look good, but if you're not aware of it, you may stay with it or you may be around it and just be comfortable, whereas it's not the beauty that God has destined for us. So as all come to the beauty of Christ, just be aware of that when we behold Christ, we become like him. Yeah. So let's all come to the beauty of Christ. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. We're inching towards the service. It's about that time. I hope you are ready. Um, wherever you are, if you're using your laptop, put it in the middle of the living room and make sure everyone is watching. You know, what's our declaration for tonight? declaration for tonight is Jesus the first among 10,000. You can declare with us and let's say Jesus the first among 10,000. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh hallelujah, 
that all may be all. How will they be all if they do not see? How will they be all if they do not see? Lord, open the eyes. Lord, let your light shine to remove, oh God, confusion, to remove darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We are still over this prayer point. We are still over this prayer point. Amen and amen. The Bible says, darkness covered the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And the waters were hovering over the earth. And then God said, let there be light. Hallelujah. Let there be light. The light that was going to be, it is not this light that we see of the sun. No. It was the light of the world. This light was Jesus Christ. Amen. Let there be light. Let there be light. True worship begins where there is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where there is revelation of who the Son of God is. That is when true worship begins. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Paul was a murderer. Paul was persecuting the church. Yet he was called to worship. Oh, hallelujah. To worship the light. And on that day, on his way to Damascus, when he met the light, he said, Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? He recognized the Lordship because the light appeared. There are many people who are in darkness. There are many people who are ignorant. There are many people who are bound in confusion. Today we are going to pray. Lord, let there be light. Your family, are they bound in ancestral worship? They need light. They need to see the Son of God. Oh, hallelujah. They need to see the Son of God. And you are going to pray to the Say, Lord. Let there be light. May the darkness of ignorance, may the darkness of confusion be scattered in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray where you are. 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 Unless the wise man saw, they start shining. They wouldn't worship. They wouldn't worship. Say, Lord, let there be light in the nations. Let there be light. Let there be revelation. May eyes open to see the light. Like Paul had seen it, like Paul had seen it, like Paul had seen it. Let there be light. Let there be light. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the nations see the greatness of God. Oh, hallelujah. May the nations see the greatness of God. May the nations see the greatness of God. See the greatness of God. See the greatness of God. Greatness of God. In Jesus' name, He said. If I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. I will draw all men. I will draw all men. You do not light the lamp and put it under the table. You do not light the lamp and put it under the table. It must be visible. Welcome to the time of visibility. Welcome to the time of visibility. No more darkness. No more darkness. We shall no longer be hidden. We will make the light of Christ shine for us. We will let the light of Christ shine for us. Let it be known. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> let it be known that you are God. Let it be known that you are God. And that we are your servants. In the name of Jesus. Let there be light. Scatter darkness. In families. Scatter darkness. In the nations. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. You become what you worship. Amen. You become what you worship. Hallelujah. Meaning you become what you behold. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, And we all with unveiled faces. Oh, hallelujah. Today we pray in the name of Jesus. May the veil be torn. May the veil be torn. And we all with unveiled faces. We behold like in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And we are transformed in the same image. <laughs> From glory to glory, you become what you love. You become what you admire. May God deliver you from uh, wrong admirations. Or negative admirations. Praise the Lord. That are inspired by Babylon. They are inspired by Satan by Satan, the serpent. Hallelujah. 
Alléluia Church. Alléluia Church. Oh Alléluia Church. Oh Alléluia Church. You become what you be all. What you be all has an influence over your life. It has an influence over your life. And we all, we've unveiled faces. We be all like in a mirror. Oh hallelujah. There is reflection. Oh hallelujah. The glory of God. And we are transformed in the same image. Amen. 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 Pray after me, say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, set me free from negative admirations. What are you admiring? Say, Lord, set me free from negative admirations. That I may be all on you. That I may be all on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is Babylon who seduces people into idolatry. Negative admiration. Negative worship. The children of Israel, they are turned. They are turned to bow. They are turned to bow. Hallelujah. Because they used to admire the works of Baal. Ah. But I pray tonight, may God rest Elijah. Oh, hallelujah. Who are going to throw the works of Baal to the ground. Who are going to render the works of Baal useless. Who are going to expose the nakedness of Baal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And glorify the name of Jesus. By the fire of God. Pray after me, say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, by fire, we bring judgment over the gods of this world who have seduced many hearts, who have seduced many lives into negative worship to bind them into idolatry. Say tonight, bring them fire, bring them fire, bring them fire to turn every heart to the true and living God. Come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray. Come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray. Come on, pray, come on, pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. We pray tonight by the Father of God. By the Father of God. By the Father of God. Turn back the attention. Ah. Turn back the attention. 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 We bring judgment over the gods. Over the gods of this world. Over the gods of this world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Turn back the attention. Turn back the attention. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Turn back the attention, Lord. Those who had lost their way, like the wise men who found themselves in the house of Herod and lost the, the star. Tonight we pray, let there be redirection. Let there be redirection of attention. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Redirection of attention. May our full attention be on you. Our full attention be on you. In Jesus' name. Lord, I give you my heart, give you my soul, live for you, alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Come on, give God 
we want to welcome you to this powerful and wonderful service and we believe that this is the day of the Lord we shall rejoice and be glad in it hallelujah and we definitely say that change is coming hallelujah somebody type in the comments there change is coming and we believe that the change that we are looking for is change that is glorious hallelujah and the glory of god is an evidence of the victory over babylon hallelujah who takes glory out of the house of god and throws it into the world but today we are declaring that glory is back to the house hallelujah and therefore all things will come back to the house hallelujah and therefore i want to just also speak to all those who are joining us for the first time today please may you just make sure that you let us know in in uh, in our dms or inboxes to let us know if you're new but you can also uh just you know leave us your name in the comment section if you are new and we're going to get back to you and if you have not yet reshared this live we want to encourage you uh to reshare the live and uh, we also want you to connect another friend today because we believe that God wants to do us good in his presence therefore without a waste of time we are going to move straight to the free state and we are going to connect to a powerful sermon that is going to bring all things to the beauty of Jesus tell your neighbor you are beautiful in Jesus hallelujah we love the Christ who makes all things beautiful in their time and this is that time may god bless you and stay tuned for the word of god welcome to this time of prayer a time of praise and worship that we refer to as our celebration online here at jtl throughout the world god bless you for taking the time and the opportunity to gather with us and this is Dr. Joshua Kiluba from JTL Free State and today we are sharing on the theme all will come to the beauty of Christ and our theme scripture is from John chapter number 12 27 to 32 but allow me to give you context by beginning to read from verse 20 this is what the Bible says some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. And Peter told Andrew about it. And they went together to ask Jesus. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter his glory. And I would like you not to get lost in the reading. This is the response to Jesus on the desire of the Greeks to have an audience with him. Jesus then responds, This request you are making of me is a sign of the time. Is a sign of the time. And I will not quickly jump into explanations but you must understand that certain requests put upon your life may be signifying a sign of the time of glory the time has come for the son to be glorified and 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 maybe before we read further so that we keep and crystallize this verse in our minds he said in response to the desire of the Greeks to have an audience with him that his time of glory had come and therefore in a nutshell the coming of the nations to Jesus was signifying the season of his glory hallelujah the nations were coming to him hallelujah and he was also coming out into the nations hallelujah and hallelujah and i want you to understand today oh that your anointing is coming out of the nation into the nations into the nations hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah your grace 
is coming out of the nation into uh, the nations. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Israel entered into a worldwide fame. When they came out of the nation, they call Egypt. Hallelujah. There is a mystery of coming out of the nation into the nations. And that mystery is glory. It is glory. Hallelujah. It is glory. Hallelujah. A life without limitation. A life without boundaries. What Jesus called the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Today we declare an ends of the earth over what you do over what you over your ministry over your career and ends of the earth anointing hallelujah ends of the earth to the ends of the earth hallelujah to the ends of the earth you will be my witnesses you will be my witnesses i want you to see this reality that we are reading about let's go let's continue and jesus responds to Andrew uh, and uh, to Philip uh, and today uh, and today I would like uh, the church to be a Philip hallelujah and an Andrew uh, because these were a point of contact with Jesus uh, they were a point of contact with Jesus uh, not just that they were an, a national uh, they were an international point of contact uh, oh hallelujah there is someone out there this is not given to everyone uh, it was not given to Peter it was not given to John uh, it was not given to James uh, but it was given to Philip uh, and to Andrew hallelujah remember that it is the same Philip uh, that brought Nathanael to Jesus uh, it is the Andrew who brought Peter to Jesus uh, and so wherever you are if you are the, the Andrew uh, and the, the, the Philip of this generation, uh, I pray that your anointing uh, may be activated, uh, that the nations may come, may come, may come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is time for Jesus. Let me tell you something. Nations go to other nations when they want to view, when there is a worldwide, a monumental, touristic attraction. Today, Jesus is about to become a tourist attraction hallelujah not in the negative sense but in the positive sense people are going to take visas and when they will be asked at the embassy where are you going they will say i am going to hear hallelujah hallelujah i am going to hear the word of god the word of god hallelujah the word of god hallelujah the word of god hallelujah i remember the slave woman who was in syria and his saw Naaman, a man of the nations who was struggling with leprosy that had disfigured his face. And so then this young woman became a point of contact between this man and Elisha, hallelujah, who was going to restore the beauty of Naaman. Let me ask you one thing. If you are going to restore beauty, then you must be a source of beauty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man called Elisha, he had the chariots of fire. And these chariots were not just power, hallelujah, but they were also beauty, hallelujah hallelujah god uh, is a god of power and also a god of splendor hallelujah a god of splendor and let me tell you uh, the radiance hallelujah of the children of god uh, the radiance of the church uh, has got impact hallelujah over the kingdom of darkness over the kingdom of darkness hallelujah and hallelujah the church is able to radiate the kind of light hallelujah that can cause cancer spiritual cancer in the demonic realm hallelujah in the demonic realm the same way uh, when satan uh, is being glorified in a place uh, he's able to irradiate uh, negative rays uh, that are able to paralyze uh, that are able to alter the function uh, of the children of god uh, today uh, we have the light that is brighter than the sun hallelujah brighter than the sun brighter than the sun this is an amazing reading 
Jesus knew uh, the time of glory is the time of nations. Hallelujah. That is the time of glory. Let no one, uh, let no one teach you uh, about any other glory. The glory of God. Listen to this. Uh, listen to this. The Bible says the whole earth uh, is filled with the glory of God. Uh, the glory of God uh, has got global impact. Uh, it has got a global reach. Hallelujah. And so today, uh, it is time for you to enter uh, the glory of God. Uh, I am here to speak to intercessors. Uh, there are some very faithful people uh, that have been praying consistently uh, in different places. Uh, today, uh, I'm here to say to you uh, that your intercession uh, will have a global impact. Hallelujah. will have a global impact. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. I like what the Bible says. Uh, or rather what the Bible says has the power to illuminate. The Bible says the prodigal son went to a faraway country. Hallelujah. But the prayer of his father. Hallelujah. The prayer of his father had the power of attraction. The power to attract him back. And so we should understand that the power of attraction is twofold. It can bring people to Jesus. It can bring people back to Jesus. It is a twofold power. Hallelujah. And today, it is not one thing for you. It is one thing for you to win souls. It is another thing for you to restore the souls that have been won. Hallelujah. When they go astray, when they fall away. Oh, today, we need the anointing that brings the righteous back on his feet after he has fallen seven times hallelujah and so this is already a wonderful scripture in which we are digging in and i will go and i will share with you some very simple principles look at what jesus says he says now the time has come we are at verse 23 for the son of man to enter into his glory hallelujah it is one thing for god to destine you for glory it is another thing for you to enter it is one thing for god to promise you the promised land or to promise you something a, a place a ministry it is another thing for you to enter and to operate in it and we saw that with the children of israel they had the promise of the promised land hallelujah i i they had the promise to enter Canaan, a place of milk and honey. And while they were there, when they arrived at the place, they found the giants. Hallelujah. They found the giants. Now I understand. Now me and you, we understand why Jesus says the things that follow. The Bible says, I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Hallelujah. A plentiful harvest, not of one life, but of new lives. And the Bible says, those, those who love their lives will lose it. But those who care for nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants are must must be where i am and the father will honor anyone who serves me verse 27 now listen to what jesus says my soul is deeply troubled he was about to enter his glory but there was a trouble hallelujah some of you are experiencing a trouble before the entrance oh let me speak to someone today you think things are going wrong actually some of you think that you're actually going backwards you are experiencing a trouble before the entrance is what we call the sons of Anak. Hallelujah. God had defeated Pharaoh. He had defeated the Red Sea. He had defeated the desert. But now the sons of Anak seem to be an obstacle. They are just a trouble before I enter. And so today, I want you to stand in the day of trouble before you enter. There will be a resistance in the, for the final, I call it the final round, the final mile. You are about to enter. I like what Jesus says that i like what the bible says in deuteronomy 9 you are about to enter and possess and dispossess oh hallelujah nations more 
powerful. I said to you already, the season of glory is a season, is a season of nations. I want you to see something very interesting. Israel was entering the territory of Canaan, but Deuteronomy prophesied that they were entering the mystery of the nations. Oh, hallelujah. Today, I speak a movement from a spiritual place called Egypt into a spiritual place called Canaan, a place of global impact. Hallelujah. I speak a movement, a relocation. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. A translocation. Hallelujah. Oh, it doesn't matter what God is going to do, but God is going to move you. He's going to move you. Maybe you are comfortable. Maybe you are prosperous. Hallelujah. I shared with a with man of God and I say to him, I say to him the words of the Bible because those words touched me. God said to Moses, you have long stayed on this mountain. Hallelujah. Moses was on the mountain. Hallelujah. He was on a high place. Hallelujah. But God says you have long stayed on this mountain. There are other territories. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor there are other territories. There are other territories oh, for you to conquer. And he said, what did he say to him? He said, break come." Hallelujah. Break camp. Hallelujah. There is a breaking of a camp. Hallelujah. There's a place where God put you uh, in order to strengthen you. Uh, it was a campsite. Uh, God was building your strength. Uh, he was giving you abilities. Uh, but now he's saying, uh, break camp uh, because uh, you are about to enter uh, the season uh, of the nations uh, of global impact. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. In Deuteronomy, in, in Joshua 13, uh, Joshua was an old man and God testified of his age. He said, Joshua, you are old and advanced in age. But God said, but, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, today, today, I can declare with all confidence for the believer that age is but a number. He said, you are advanced in age, but there are many more territories. Tell your neighbor you will not die. Hallelujah. You will not die. Doesn't matter if you're 75 years old. There is a God of the old people. Hallelujah. He's a God who comes to Joshua. There are many people who had written themselves off because of their age. But God says there are many more territories that are yet to be conquered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. And hallelujah. God is mighty. Hallelujah. And so so, uh, let me go there to the end and so Jesus was deeply troubled he said should I pray father save me from this hour in other words should I turn back my glory is here the door to the glory is here should I turn back there are many of the children of God that turn back before their season of glory today in the name of Jesus receive courage to pursue receive courage to Carry on. Receive courage to go forward. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Before David entered the full victory over the Philistines, he experienced an attack by the Amalekites at the place called Ziklag. They came and they took his wife and they took his children and they took their goods. And the Bible says David cried. He was about to enter the final phase of the victory but uh, there was a moment uh, of deep trouble uh, and so he said to God uh, shall I pursue uh, shall I pursue uh, he took the effort uh, of the priest uh, and went into the prayer room uh, shall I pursue uh, and the Lord answered uh, surely you can bless you hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah and David strengthened himself uh, in the Lord uh, and he Pursued, he pursued, and he took back. He took back his wife and everything, and a great spoils, and brought them back to the camp. And as you read from there in Second Samuel, he went on to inflict decisive, decisive defeat in the lie in the camp of the Philistines. And let me tell you, David had for his life each child of God the children of God 
don't have 100 battles each one of you you've got a specific battle you've got a specific a specific task that you need to carry out and so many of you feel like you are fighting many things no 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 you have your battle hallelujah so had this battle his battle was the amalekites and the ammonites David and the Philistines. Well, Moses had the, had the Egyptians. And so you must know where your battle is coming from. Don't think you are fighting everything and anything. Jacob had the first bones, had the first bone that was fighting against him. And so you must know, you must know your battles. And therefore I agree with the common saying, choose your battle. We don't actually choose your battle. Know your battle. Hallelujah. Know your battle. Jesus knew his battle. He knew who his enemy was. He was the prince of darkness. Let's go to the final part of my sermon. There's lots of things to tell you. There's lots of things to tell you. But this verse is loaded with wonderful things that can edify our souls. So he says, should I pray? Should I pray? Should you pray? Should you pray? Should you pray against the trouble? The trouble at the entrance? Oh no, you need to pray for power. You need to pray for breakthrough. Because once you enter, hallelujah. Once you enter, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is done. Hallelujah. It is done. It is finished. Once you enter, you sit. When you sit, everything submits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, then he said, should I pray? Save me from this hour. No, it is my hour of entrance. Here, I do not need. I don't need to be saved. But for this reason, I came. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus identified a critical moment in his life hallelujah many people miss critical moments in their lifetimes many people miss the critical moments of their lives when god is going to do things that would will make will set a clear distinction between the past and the future and so uh, listen to me uh, very quickly uh, and so this is what he says uh, he says a uh, father bring glory to your name hallelujah when it's time to enter glory we must make prayers of glory hallelujah we must not make prayers uh, other prayers uh, which are prayers uh, of repentance uh, some of you are uh, when the enemy attacks you, uh, you enter into repentance. Uh, I'm here to say to you, uh, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, yes, there are people who sin. Uh, God is faithful and just to forgive. Uh, but for the majority of Christians, uh, when the enemy attacks you, uh, at the entrance of your glory, at the entrance of your glory, you must be aware. You must be aware of the spirit of condemnation. Uh, you must be aware of the spirit uh, that brings back uh, your previous, uh, the previous things uh, that you may have done. The devil can bring a mindset of guilt. But today in the name of Jesus, be free from a distraction in prayer. Hallelujah. You better make, you, you don't have to make prayers of confession. Prayers to try and flee self-condemnation. But you need to stand out like Jesus and say, Father, bring glory to your name. Hallelujah bring glory to your name hallelujah in other words father it is a season for the public display of identity hallelujah and hallelujah oh hallelujah a season a public display of my identity the name that jesus was praying for was which name it was his name hallelujah because in his name was the name of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Time is not with me uh, to explain the names of God that we carry uh, that give us the opportunity and the power to traverse the desert. Hallelujah. To go through deserts. Hallelujah. To go through storms uh, and enter the promises of God. It is the name. It is the name. Hallelujah. It is the name. Uh, for, for those who may not understand this, uh, you will find it in Exodus 23 verse 20. It, the Bible says, I put an angel before you i've put an angel before you to take you into the place that i promised you and what did what does the bible say he will take you to the to these tribes the hevites the jebusites you will overcome them he will take you into the promised land and the bible then advises us to obey and to follow to operate at the level of instruction and this is the conclusion for my name is in him 
for my name is in him hallelujah hallelujah the angel that called the devouring fire oh hallelujah is an angel of identity hallelujah he reveals identity is an expression of identity hallelujah hallelujah i like when when david was on the battlefield allow me just to speak about this when david when david overcame he overcame goliath so asked to whose whose son is this in other name what is his surname hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah whose son is this hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> whose son whose son whose son hallelujah and many of you uh, you think the answer to that question uh, is jesse i tell you you are completely wrong when the anointing fell on the head of david uh, he had transitioned from a son of jesse uh, into a son of the most high uh, behold a man after my heart hallelujah mm, hallelujah mm, hallelujah mm. The anointing, hallelujah, causes a transition from biological identity to spiritual identity, hallelujah. Maybe your name is cursed, hallelujah. Oh, today we anoint you uh, with the anointing, uh, the anointing, the kingly anointing, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, I transition, I transition. Uh, somebody say, I transition, hallelujah, from biological identity to spiritual identity. Oh, beloved, uh, this is very good, but I, my time is short. Uh, I have to get uh, to the point. Uh, how will the glory come? And Jesus says, glorify your name. Uh, then a voice from heaven saying, uh, I have brought glory to my name. And I will do so again. Hallelujah. And uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses was in, I have brought glory to my name. Hallelujah. Uh, Elijah was in, I have brought glory to my name. Hallelujah. Oh, Daniel was, I have brought glory to my name. Peter was, I have brought glory to my name. But me, Kiluba Joshua, I am in, I will do it again. Hallelujah. And so today, I want you to see that God has also created space for glory for your name to be written in the book of glory hallelujah hallelujah the book of glory hallelujah hallelujah the book of glory the book of glory hallelujah time is not with me to explain to you about the book of glory but today you are in that next phase the final phase i will do it again hallelujah we are in a season we will see the hand of God again. If the missionaries preached in South Africa and there was a great revival, the kind of revival that kept people and families during the entire time of apartheid, while they were being oppressed, a great revival was brewing. Until this moment, we are able to sing. We give you all the glory. You are worthy to be praised. He would do it again hallelujah he doesn't need a party for him to reveal himself he can reveal himself without any cause or purpose or reason he reveals himself because he wants to hallelujah it is his will and the earth is filled with his glory oh hallelujah and when the crowd heard they heard the voice that came through it and some thought it was thunder while others declared an angel has spoken to him and just says this voice was for your benefit and not mine the time of judging the world has come when satan the ruler of this world will be cast out when satan the ruler of this world will be cast out 32 when i'm lifted up i will draw everyone to myself i will draw everyone to myself time 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 is jealous of us but let me speak to you very briefly two things i have already shared with you many things to encourage you we are the door of glory somebody say i'm at my door of glory hallelujah we are the door of glory the gateway to glory hallelujah the gateway to glory and let me tell you something how do you approach the gateway of glory you approach the gateway of glory with a warrior spirit psalms 24 lift up your heads all you gates be lifted up you ancient doors and let the king of glory 
come in hallelujah and that some begins by this declaration it says it says the lord the earth and its fullness hallelujah is the lord's is the lord's hallelujah and so we are in a season of glory it is that season where we must approach with a warrior spirit hallelujah the lord is strong and mighty in battle hallelujah glory will not be given free of charge it must be taken hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah oh the violent they take it by force hallelujah oh hallelujah glory is for the takers hallelujah somebody say i'm a taker hallelujah i'm a take her hallelujah no one enters the house of a strong man and take hallelujah without binding him glory is for the takers and the takers they are also binders hallelujah they are devil binders they are witchcraft binders today in the name of jesus use the name of jesus and bind something in your spiritual realm but you can also bind something in the physical realm hallelujah hallelujah joshua did not arrest a spiritual son he arrested a physical son s-u-n he arrested an element hallelujah moses did not split a spiritual red sea he split a physical red sea today the faith of the children of god has become more spiritual without any physical thing at all dead faith hallelujah dead faith hallelujah dead faith hallelujah may your faith hallelujah hallelujah when you read the whole book of hebrews chapter 11 they show you the effects of faith hallelujah the physical the tangible the palpable effects of faith hallelujah today oh you can touch that which you believe you can enter for that which in the spaces for which you are trusting God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I want you to see uh, that it needed to be approached uh, with a worry spirit. Uh, because a worry spirit uh, is a spirit uh, that has got the ability uh, to take the glory. But where was the glory? Where was the glory? Very quickly, uh, at the beginning of the life of Jesus. Uh, let's look at the beginning of the life of Jesus. Uh, and look at the end of the life of Jesus. Uh, where was the glory? At the beginning uh, of the life of Jesus. Uh, the glory was at the end uh, of the desert. Uh, and so Jesus uh, approached uh, the desert uh, with a warrior spirit. Uh, hallelujah. And when uh, he went into the desert, uh, he defeated. Uh, he came out uh, and he turned uh, water into wine. Uh, and the Bible says... Uh, and he revealed his glory. Hallelujah. The glory is at the end of the desert. And I'm here to declare to you, child of God, you are at the end of your desert. You are at the end. Rejoice, barren woman. Hallelujah hallelujah somebody say it's over hallelujah somebody say devil it's over hallelujah it is finished it is finished i've got no other message for you but to tell you the desert is over hallelujah the desert is over the desert is over that was the first miracle that was the first miracle of jesus and the display of glory and very quickly when you move from john chapter number two and you go to john chapter 11 where was there a display of glory? He said to Martha, believe and you will see the glory of God. Why was the glory of God invisible? Because the power of death was at work. And Jesus went with his warrior spirit and he defeated death. And the glory was visible. Hallelujah. The Bible says, people came to see Jesus. And they came to see Lazarus, the man he had raised. Hallelujah. They came to see the glory. What was the glory that Martha was going to see? She was going to see her brother. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell to somebody who has got a brother and a relative who is ill in the hospital. You will see the glory. And what is that glory? It is the recovery of your beloved ones. In the season, God willing, he has put it with the evangelists. If they rise, he will glorify 
glorify his name by raising the dead. Hallelujah. By raising the dead. And that according to his will, he would do it again. He would do it again. Tell your neighbor, he would do it again. Hallelujah. He would do it again. Do it again. Hallelujah. Evangelists preach again. Intercessors pray again. Oh, whatever you do, do it again. If you were giving, give again. If you were committed, commit again. Whatever you are doing, do it again. Because God is doing it with you. Hallelujah. He said, he said to David, oh, when you will give Hear the noise, hallelujah. In the trees, know that I have gone ahead of you, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It was a physical noise. It was a physical noise. Oh, hallelujah. Let me conclude my sermon. And finally, uh, the greater and greatest glory uh, was manifest when Jesus came from the grave, hallelujah. When he came from the grave, uh, he then appeared in glory. And it is glory that attracts. Let me read the scripture for you. It is 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42 and 2 42, 2 verses 44. And you will understand what the Bible says. So it would be with the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown perishable. It is raised in perishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in what? In glory. Hallelujah. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. And as I end my sermon, I want you to read with me Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 7. I want to read this scripture as a declaration. As a declaration. As I close my sermon. It says a rise and shine. Let me tell you this rising. It's not the rising from a chair. It's not the rising from a bed. It is the resurrection. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He said to the young girl, Talita Kumi. Hallelujah. Oh, young girl, I command you to rise up. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a resurrection today. Hallelujah. Everywhere where you'll be listening to us, there is a resurrection. He said, Arise and shine. For your light has come. Hallelujah. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. A resurrection of glory. A resurrection of glory. Hallelujah. See the darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness over the people. But the Lord rises upon you. His glory appears over you. Nations will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, they will only come. They will come to a risen church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will come to a risen church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I will rise in three days. Hallelujah. He said, nations will come to your glory and kings to the brightness. Oh, you are going to be bright. Hallelujah. Oh, you are going to be splendorous. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble. Hallelujah. Without exception. Everyone is coming. Tell them. Tell the people. Everyone is coming. They are all coming. All come to you. Your sons come from afar. Hallelujah. They are children who are coming from afar. Who are these sons? It is those who have been following the messages of Christ online. They are being born by receiving the word of Christ they too will come in the season of glory bridges will be built over oceans and people will be able to come like the Greeks they came to Jerusalem hallelujah. and hallelujah this is what the Bible says it says oh come your daughters are carried on the heap then you will look and be radiant your heart will throb and swell with joy your the wealth on the seas will be brought to you and to you the riches of the nations will come the mystery of prosperity is a product of the resurrection and the resurrection undoes the power that disfigures the power that makes the church an attractive the power
power that was at work in Isaiah 53. The Bible says he had no beauty to attract us. He had no beauty. But today, the resurrection is restoring your beauty church. It is restoring your glory church. And therefore, everything is coming. Hallelujah. 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 Everything is coming. Oh, the men, the kings, people of different uh, social status uh, and the bible says uh, the wealth uh, and the riches uh, they will also come uh, they will come uh, to your glory they will come to your glory and so today uh, if you have made that declaration uh, i want you uh, to understand that these things are yes and amen now all things will come to the reason king to the reason church Hallelujah. The Bible says we died with him and therefore have been raised with him. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, have you been raised with Christ? But how can you be raised with Christ whom you don't know? But today you have heard. You have heard the word of Christ. For this purpose he came. He came in order to release or unlock immortality unlock honor glory and power through the resurrection from the dead all these things can be yours if you accept the lord jesus as your lord and savior wherever you are i want you to raise your right hand wherever in your room and just make this prayer with me say lord jesus today i receive you as my lord and Savior. I have lived in shame for so long. Today, take away my sin and restore me to glory and that everything may begin to come towards me. May eternal life be my portion. May joy be my portion. Bless the work of my hands that I may be I a light that shines in, shame in every place so where you will send me and so that the world may see your good work in me and eventually may come to you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you uh, and God keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Hallelujah and hallelujah. What a powerful message of resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. I remember there's a time right here when we spoke about the revival of glory. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Wherever you are, raise your hands and just begin to worship God. Please be focused and begin to worship God. Begin to lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy, because he's wonderful. Say, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I bless you because the season of glory is now. The season of glory is the season of attraction. The season of glory is a season to bring a everything to Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Wherever you are, begin to pray. That's what we need to do. In a time of glory, it's not time to try and do things. The glory that we are seeking, we are not able to make it. Hallelujah. The glory is attached to the resurrection. And because the resurrection could only be given by God, the glory that follows the resurrection can also only be given by God. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for the season of glory, for the season of glory. My evangelism is entering a season of glory my prayer entering a season of glory my giving entering a season of glory if you want to be a believer who walks by faith uh, you need to learn to walk according to the time of God when God says this is the hour of glory you need to make everything according to what God is saying and you will see it hallelujah the season of glory is now your light has come and the glory of God is risen upon you not the glory of man the glory of man depends on on the works of man the glory of God is worked by God and that is why we enter by saying thank you enter is gets with thanksgiving someone say Lord I thank you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you are going through I want you to say this by faith uh, because the Bible says if you believe uh, you will see the glory of God uh, it doesn't matter what is happening in your mind uh, we read in the Bible Jesus was troubled uh, but I want you to dare to say Lord uh, I thank you for the season of glory uh, my studies is entering the season of glory uh, my gift everything is 
is entering the season of glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There are powerful things in what Pastor Joshua said. And I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Today I really, I, I'm filled with prayer. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that, that times of glory, they work with prayer prayer times hallelujah jesus went to the mountain of transfiguration as he was praying the glory came hallelujah if the glory is a work of god we need something that puts god to move and prayer puts god to move but we see here jesus who actually makes a prayer and he says father glorify your name and jesus and god said i have glorified it and i'll glorify it again to cut the story short when jesus said that the people said an angel spoke to him and yet jesus said what was said is for you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't understand that that god was saying to jesus i will glorify you and I will glorify all those who believe in you. Oh, hallelujah and hallelujah. I want you to understand uh, that all the battles uh, that you have faced uh, from Satan that we call Babylon, uh, she's the one who kills uh, the glories of God. The Bible says she was filled with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. Remember the witnesses are the ones uh, who have got beautiful feet. Uh, it says the Bible says beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. It means they have glory to preach Jesus uh, and Babylon kills them. Babylon is also clothed uh, with pearls, uh, with scarlet, uh, with royalty uh, and what she does, uh, she takes away glory from God uh, and puts it in the world. Uh, she takes away the glories of God uh, and puts them in the grave. Uh, but today because of Jesus, uh, God would do for us what he did for Jesus. That's what it means. Uh, I have glorified it. I will glorify it again. Uh, it means if I raised you to glory, I will raise them to glory. Uh, or today begin to declare resurrection uh, declare the end of the death of glory hallelujah and hallelujah it's babylon uh, who declared the sentence of death uh, on your glorious being uh, who reduced adam to dust uh, today god is raising from the dust uh, babylon has thrown you in the dust uh, your worship ministry is in the dust uh, your faith is in the dust uh, your intercession is in the dust uh, but today in the name of jesus uh, oh we are praying oh hallelujah we are praying for an end uh, death has got an end uh, death has an end uh, it is the God who says, I will glorify it. Babylon is saying, crucify her. But God is saying, I will glorify her. Oh, Babylon is saying, crucify them. Crucify him. But the, the heavens are saying, I will glorify him. And the voice of heaven is above the voice of Babylon. And the people who heard it, they said thunder. Somebody say thunder. Somebody say thunder. Somebody say thunder. Somebody say thunder. It is the thunder that tears the veil from the top to the bottom oh the devil doesn't want the glory that we have to be seen by the world but Jesus by the cross he tore the veil from the bottom from the top to the bottom from the choppers from the highest demon highest ranking demon who was fighting the revelation of the glory of God that you have we experience services of glory we experience we experience life of glory but the devil doesn't want that glory to reach to the nations or begin to judge Satan and say the veil is torn. Declare thunder. Declare thunder on Babylon. Declare thunder on Babylon. Declare thunder on Babylon. It's no longer time to shine in the bush. There is time to shine in the bush and there is time to appear in the city. Now is the time to appear in the city. Your glory will not be hidden. Your glory will not be hidden. There are people who know who you are. There are people who know what you are worth but they don't have the power to offer overcome Babylon. We need to overcome Babylon and your glory will speak to the nation. Your glory will speak. Oh, hallelujah. My glory will call the nations. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, your glory is about to speak. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said the voice was heard. Oh, and he said I will glorify it. Oh, the glory speaks. Oh, the glory speaks. Oh, the glory speaks. Oh, begin to pray and say, Lord, let your glory speak. Let your glory speak in places where you are accused. Let the glory of God God speak for you. I'm praying for a category of people. The Bible says those he has justified, he has glorified. For you to be justified, it means you are accused. Do you understand that? Babylon is the one who puts accusations on people that God has called to glory. But today we declare the thunder of God 
so that uh, the glory that God uh, has placed uh, upon you uh, can speak uh, for itself. Uh, everybody uh, will see it. Uh, it will speak uh, for itself. Uh, everybody uh, will see uh, that you are not uh, what Babylon uh, has said uh, you are. Uh, that you are not uh, the pain, uh, the suffering, uh, the insults uh, you have gone through. Uh, you are uh, the glory uh, of God uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, begin to worship God. Uh, begin to worship God. Uh, we give you all the glory. Uh, we give you all the glory. 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 Because you are glorifying us. We believe, oh God, that the prayer of Jesus is answered. It was made in the time of Jesus. God answered Jesus. He also answered us in that same time. And today we will carry the name of Jesus should not be afraid of Babylon. It is finished. It is finished. She cannot stop you anymore. You can tell Babylon, you are finished. You cannot stop the glory of God upon my life. You cannot stop the glory of God on my calling. You cannot stop the glory of God. I am going to preach Jesus, not in shame, but in glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, worship the Lord. Oh, lift him up because the season of glory has come. Amen. Everything cry glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the glory will speak. Oh, hallelujah. The glory will speak. Oh, hallelujah. No more time to present yourself. Let the glory of God upon you speak. Oh, hallelujah. Speak for Jesus. Hallelujah. It doesn't speak just for you. It speaks for Jesus. Because everything you went through is because of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this prayer. is manifest on the body of Christ. It's manifest specifically on JT hour. It's manifest first uh, on our father pastor Kiluba who is called to preach the gospel and has experienced uh, a lot uh, of battles uh, that we are trying to kill uh, the glory of God uh, upon him. Uh, resurrection uh, is uh, here. Uh, or lift up uh, your heads uh, or your gates. Uh, begin to declare this with me. Uh, it says lift up uh, your heads. Uh, there are places uh, where no attention. Uh, you are ignored. Uh, when heads uh, are down uh, it means uh, you are ignored. Uh, but now declare with me. Uh, lift Lift up your head or your gates. When Satan cannot stop your glory, Satan will try to ignore your glory, to lead people to ignore your glory. But let the glory speak. It's the glory that makes people to turn, to turn around. Oh, hallelujah. People will turn around. People will turn around. They will turn around to look. Glory cannot be ignored. Glory cannot be ignored. Glory cannot be ignored. The glory of God cannot be ignored. Moses turned around and he went to see the glory of God. And God spoke to him. Oh, the glory speaks and cannot be ignored. So say with me, lift up your head. Oh, you get. I don't know where the gate was closed for you to enter with the glory of Jesus. People want you, but they don't want you to stand for Jesus. People want you glorious for yourself, but you know that your glory is for Jesus. Do they understand that your glory is for Jesus. If you listen to people, you will lose your glory. Somebody say, my glory. Somebody say, my glory is for Jesus. Somebody say, my glory is for preaching the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus because I have received glory to speak about Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody celebrate. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Somebody celebrate. I feel a celebration today. We were speaking about glory in the morning. We are speaking about glory in the afternoon. And we know that Babylon is finished. Babylon, you are finished. Praise God. Praise God. Nothing will be able to stop the glory of God in your life anymore. If it was stopped before, it will no longer be stopped. It will no longer be stopped. What is resurrected cannot be buried. What is resurrected cannot be buried. When God begins to raise you in glory, no no one and nothing can put you down. God resurrected Jesus 2,000 years ago. There is nothing that has managed to bury Jesus. They burnt the Bible. They persecuted the church. They killed Christians. They closed and persecuted men of God. But until today, Jesus has not gone back to the grave. Oh, somebody declare, I am not going back to the grave. I am not going back to the grave because Jesus has not been put 
back in the grave since he left it. We are leaving the grave today, not to return there, not to return there. May the experience of death, may the experience of shame and humiliation be history. Somebody say history. Somebody say history. Somebody say it's gone. It's in the past. It's yesterday. Not to be remembered. Don't even speak about it. From now on, let everything about you speak glory. Oh, hallelujah. Speak glory for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That is our declaration today. Everything about me will speak the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When glory begins to speak, you don't have to speak to people. Let the glory speak. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, when Jesus was in the glory, he didn't need to speak to Peter. He didn't need to speak to Peter. The glory spoke to Peter. Oh, hallelujah. There are people who are going to have dreams tonight. Oh, hallelujah. When the star of Jesus began to shine, there are people who had dreams. There are people who are going to dream dreams uh, that your time of glory has come. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Arise and shine uh, for your glory has come. Uh, everything about me uh, will speak uh, the glory of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. May God bless you. Uh, we have come to the time of offering. And we believe that we are giving into a time of glory, into a season of glory. Hallelujah. Therefore, as you give your offering, I want you to connect to the word that is saying the season of glory has come. Give God a glorious offering. Hallelujah. An offering of faith that believes in what God is doing. Hallelujah and hallelujah. And as we give our offering, we're going to be blessed by a song by VH that is saying, send me, Lord. Hallelujah. When God sends you, it is a time of glory. God will not send the shame for you. God will send the glorious you. Give to God with joy in your hearts and celebration in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah and hallelujah. We are ready to go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Joshua said it is time to have global impact, to speak to the nations. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. We have come to the very end of our service. God bless you so much. God bless all our teams. There's a lot that has gone into, you know, this life and we want to bless the people that are doing this work. I say to you that because you are serving into the glory of Jesus, you are never going to be shameful in this life. Your names will be remembered, as Pastor Joshua said, in the book of glory. Hallelujah. So if you want the details, please call Pastor Joshua to get the detail of your blessing. God bless you so much. The Free State, Cape Town, we love you, family, for the blessing that you are to us. And it's good to meet with you every Sunday evening. Yes, if you have your neighbor, give them a virtual high five. Give them a virtual, a virtual handshake. Yes, you, did, you don't need to give an elbow. It's virtual. So you can give a handshake, a hug. Yes, just make sure that you keep your distance with your brother. Okay, let's leave it there. Okay, God bless you so much. It's going to be a glorious weekend. Remember, everything about me will speak glory. Hallelujah. And that, like I said, you know, let your faith not just be, you know, be in your talk, you know. Pastor Joseph said, if you believe, you need to engage the elements. Somebody say, engage the elements. Yeah, boy. Yes, talk glorious, speak glorious, pray glorious. You need to aim. You are not going to see glory unless you are aiming for it. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Everything about me will speak the glory of Jesus. We come to the end and therefore we declare that we love you and we are serious about it. God bless you, ladies and gents. Good night. Generation to generation